being a sales manager is kind of where I wanted to be. I mean, I would okay. obviously this this is a great company that if you come in and put your boots on and get to work, you've got opportunity to grow. Sonny Farmer here with Mountain Motorsports, the pit box, the show where we go behind the scenes and get to know the people of Mountain Motorsports and hear a little bit about their story. I'm sitting here with this little guy right here, Josh <laughs> Andrews from Mountain Motorsports Buford. He is the sales manager there. And I just, Josh, man, you've got a real interesting story, man, but tell us about your, your, your love for the bikes, man, and what brought you to Mountain and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I started riding dirt bikes when, probably before I could walk, really. Um, three, four years old, I was on the PW50 and obviously was a big kid, so moved up to a YZ80 when I was, shoot, seven years old, probably six or seven. Um, my whole family rides, dirt bikes, full or side by sides, Jeeps were a big off-road group of people. So like Outdoorsy our, guys and gals. Like to spend our time in the woods. Where did you yeah. come from originally? Uh, I was born in Texas. In Texas. What mm -hmm. brought you to Georgia from Texas? So my dad was a hydraulic specialist and worked on like rock quarry type equipment. Sure. And there was a big rock court in the south side of Atlanta at the time that brought my family here. And, uh, so they come so, here for work? Yeah, so we all moved here back in probably 1996 would be about the time we moved to, okay. to the Atlanta area. Grew up in Woodstock and went to Cherokee High School. I've lived in Georgia pretty much my whole life. So, so Georgia's home at, the, at this for point? For sure. Yeah, Tell me sure. more about these dirt bikes. So you started getting older. I didn't mean to yeah. segue there, but as, yeah. you're, as you're getting older, get getting a little more serious about dirt bikes from the time you were a kid to like graduating into bigger bikes, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I mean, I've worked my way all the way up and I took a break from motorcycles and was career focused. Had a sure. had a child young at 19 and oh wow, took a break from having some expendable income to enjoy the right. toys. And part of it. Used to be the guy walking around the showroom looking at all the toys, trying to figure out how I could get myself into one. And, right, um, and probably how you can get out of it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So I kind of got back into uh, dual sporting for a while, maybe seven, eight years ago, and kind of transitioned, met some people that worked for Mountain at the time and still do, and got back into dirt bikes and slowly progressed into racing and um, won a little amateur four-class, uh, four-stroke C-class in the Sork Series that is raced locally here. And um, you know, dirt bikes is definitely my passion. That's the funnest thing that we have here wow, for me yeah. that I like to ride. But we've got full and side by sides at the house, and you can you can ride it for a good hour or two, or just just around the house where we live. We live up in North Georgia, so that's cool. Power sports is definitely um, ingrained in a part of who I am since yeah. since I was a little kid. So sounds like you're an enthusiast, man. You know, for sure. and just you know in, enthralled with it. You know, at this point, you do oh, it yeah. for work, you do it for play. Yeah. You grew up in it. Oh, yeah. It's just been a huge part of your life, and that's what we find. The more people we talk about uh, that are with us at Mountain is, man, mm -hmm. this is a lifestyle. This isn't oh, a hobby. Sure. I mean, these are people uh, within our organization that have just grown up around this stuff, and it's part of who they are. And now yep. they've made their passion their paycheck, so oh, to yeah. speak. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of people are wanting to know. I know I want to know, and it's kind of the elephant in the room. I know you get asked this question a lot, but. <laughs> What is it you like about Vanilla Ice? Um, I mean, his hairstyle, facial tattoos. Um, to me, he's kind of a, a beacon of light in a dark place. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that. I, I too feel uh, feel the same way. I mean, he really grabbed us with Ice Ice Baby. Yeah. Um, too cold. And now look at him. You know, yeah. the guy's been around a long time. So when you ride dirt bikes now, what size bike are you on, <clears throat> man? Jeez. I basically ride this bike right here now. Okay. Um, I, I won a championship series on a KTM 450. Okay, wow. Tried out the 350 for a little while and have migrated back to the 300s. Me and the group of guys that I ride with, and again, some of them work at Mountain, we like riding super technical, hard, single track. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's a perfect machine for that type of ride. And we sprinkle racing in. We do, you know, Enduros and the Sork Series, which is local to here. So we do sure. some local racing, but mainly we kind of cherry pick that. The funnest thing we do is just free riding, going out. And yeah. Hitting, hitting hard stuff and doing the big hill climb. Hanging and, out with the guys and yeah, just doing sure. it, man, going out and, and making a day of it. Yep. What would you tell a young person if they're thinking about getting a dirt bike or a woods bike of some sort? What, what, what advice would you give a man to get started in something like that? Just go for whatever you can get your hands on. You know, every bike, no matter what, you're, what you can afford or what you can get your hands on, you're going to have a good time with. So um, some people get too caught up in metrics and figures and right. horsepower and size and two-stroke and four-stroke. Um, if you're newer to it, just just get on something and go ride, you know. And a, as you get into it, you'll get your feet you'll, wet. You'll start to find out what it is. It's it's gonna you know speak to you. Sure. sure. Sometimes I think you got to get off those forums and get away from your computer for a minute yeah. and get you something. Actually, get out there yeah. with some knobby tires in the dirt and yeah. experience what it is instead of being over analytical. You're just yeah. saying, man, 
get out there, get what yeah. you can, get what you can afford, get what's available to you, yeah. and get out there and have fun with and it. And the beautiful thing here with us is we've got we've got people in every discipline that have experience more so in motorcycle side or dirt bikes or fours or whatever it may be. Um, so here, I mean, we can kind of fine tune your experience and get you on exactly what you're looking for. Uh, a lot of guys come in and their buddies ride a 250 or whatever it might be, and they're they're headset. <laughs> this is the perfect bike for me, and then you come in and you just sit on it, realize you don't fit on, right? So yeah. Yeah. Um, fortunately for us, we've got you know. 80, 90 dirt bikes in stock to kind of fine tune what you're looking for if that's what you're looking looking to have. And whether sure. it be an ATV side by side, we've got a little bit of everything to kind of make sure you're getting what's perfect for you. But um, if there's if there's challenges, find the perfect bike from a monetary standpoint. Anything you get on, you're going to have fun. Like I was telling you, I was riding a little CR50 around here the other day. Right. It was a great time. I would so. have liked to have seen that. I guess it, at this point, man, it's just looking back, you know, on, on you riding as a kid and, and as, a, as a, a teen or young adult to where you're at now. Man, what what is dirt bikes? I mean, taught you? Is there any kind of, without being too cliche, is there any kind of yeah. lessons or takeaways that you have from dirt bikes that sure. you've been able to apply to life or anything? Or am yeah, I reaching I mean, too far there? No, I mean the the thing I like most about dirt bikes is the struggle, right? You're you're going out there and suiting up in 95 degree weather and True. putting 25 pounds of gear on, and you're going to fight a 245 pound machine that just wants to get away from you. Um, the reason a lot of me and my buddies like riding technical hard single track is because it's a challenge. You know, we set out, we don't know if we're going to finish the 10 miles of single track or not, but uh, we're going to go hit it and do the best we can. And um, it's fun to see a group of people come together and it's a, it's a solo sport. We're all on our own bike, but sometimes it takes every single person in the group to get us right. through sections. You Absolutely. Know? And, you know, life's not always easy. It's challenging. So it's fun to go out there and push myself to the limit and, you know, see if I've still got it. You know, it's, it's rewarding. Absolutely. I grew up playing sports too. So uh, the challenge of it is fun. It, it brings me back to you know, being younger when times are simpler and, and having that challenge and fighting through and persevering. And um, obviously the racing standpoint of it's fun to go compete sometimes and line up against a kid that's 18 years old and his dad just prepped his bike and, you know, me and the buddies are rolling up in the truck and setting them up. We just worked and got home a couple hours ago, it feels like, and we'll line up and, and show them what we got. So it's a, it's a great experience for me. It's probably the funnest thing that I do, the most challenging as far as what we sell. Literally, um, literally I mean, not trying to be funny, you're literally living the dream, as they say. And that yeah. really, you know, when you're talking about one of our core values of competitiveness, you know, sure. and as you, as you, um, uh, you know, get into that, man, once mm -hmm. again, we're seeing that you're living a lifestyle mm -hmm. that we preach about all the time yeah. and that you're a part of this. And mm -hmm. what about if we look back at a 12 year old Josh and was going to say, hey, man, you're going to grow up and, and, and be a sales manager at a, yeah. at a huge motorcycle dealership. What do you think you would have thought about mm -hmm. that at you know, 10, 12 years old as you're growing up learning how to ride bikes? Yeah, I mean, this has always been a dream for me. You know, I'd, my previous experience it was my leader of people in the restaurant business and I always dreamed, how do, how do I get in this place and be a right. part of this? Sure. You know, I used to be the guy walking around on my day off dreaming about being a part of the organization and then it finally happened. So really the, the seat I'm sitting in is uh, a lifelong dream of mine to be a part of this business. and Literally not here. this one though. This isn't very dreamy at all. Uh, it's pretty this nice. could actually give you a hemorrhoid in reality. It could. But we kind of went with a theme here. Yeah, so thanks like for I'm working with a, me on that. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing a box squat in high school. That's I feel okay. like we're in the circus. You yeah. know, you get the elephant stand on there with one leg and then you give him some food. He jumps mm -hmm. over the hoop or whatever. But mm -hmm. where do we go now at this point? Like y you've been with Mountain how long now? Two years. Two years. You're a sales manager. Mm -hmm. What are your aspirations? Where do you see yourself five years from now? Um, I mean, really, I'm kind of focused on being in the moment. You know, okay. this, the being a sales manager is kind of where I wanted to be. I mean, I would, okay. obviously, this this is a great company that if you come in and put your boots on and get to work, you've got opportunity to grow. And, um, you know, you get rewarded for being a hard worker and having talent. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, I love the opportunity to continue to progress, but um, I'm newer in the role here and completely 100% diving into what we've got going on. And, not you got a much. great store and a great team, so yeah, that's I'm not, huge. I'm not too focused on what the next step is for me. I think I've got challenges here as a as a business to um, continue to grow our guest experience and our team member experience. And until I've reached those those goals, I haven't really looked too far past this position. But awesome. You know, to your point, of, you know, we we live it. The beautiful thing here is we're off Sunday and Monday. You know, so yeah. the five or six of us that all work from Mountain and Ride together, we're we're weekend warriors, and we work all week and you know show up to the tracks on Sundays and. You know, get to live the dream that we sell every day. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of, for sure. Work hard, play hard, right? For sure. Yeah. Um, Josh, man, I'm I'm blown away. I mean, you guys got an awesome store here. Every time yeah. we come in here, the culture's strong. There's inventory mm -hmm. everywhere. People really act like they want to be here. Yeah, for sure. You guys are riding together. I see all of those things, you know, and and just coming to fruition every time we come into this store. I um, mean, it's exciting, man, to see your team wanting to learn. And I've heard nothing but great things when uh, your team talks to me. They're they're bragging on you, you know. I mean that. 
that says a lot because you guys got a lot of good things going. Yeah. Um, what size shoe are we looking at there? <laughs> um, I can't stand it any longer. What are we dealing with there? A little 16 action. A 16. Yeah. Now overall, how tall are you? Uh, about 6'7". About six foot seven. Mm -hmm. Has that caused some challenges as far as getting on some smaller bikes when you were growing uh, up? For or? sure. For gotcha. sure. And being young, I had to ride a bigger bike that maybe my body wasn't totally capable of handling right. because that's what I fit on. You had to ride outside your skill set because of your size. For sure. For sure. Probably helped you out in the long run where you're at now yeah, if you were riding sure. bigger then, bikes back you know, then. A bike like this, I've got to, you know, and that's kind of the perk. We got bigger guys that come in here and they think, man, this bike's too small for me. Well, there's ways you can set up any bike that we have to, to fit, fit your size. And, Fortunately, I've done it several times myself, being a bigger guy, so I kind of know how to how to tailor that experience to the customer and make sure they're getting what's going to yeah. support them. Yeah. Um, I just got a newer version of this bike, and I've got to put some big boy springs on it. Right, right get now, it. Right now, it I look like up. a squatted truck riding around. But I could uh, probably ride it out. fine, but it's not going to be right <laughs> yeah. for you. I can't tell you, man, how much I appreciate you taking the yeah, time to sure. talk to us on the pit box, man. And just for being here. That's what it's all about, man, to yeah. kind of get to know who we are, what we do, why we do it. And you played a big part in that, man. I appreciate your time appreciate today, you. brother. Thank, Thank you, man. You.